All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> let's start again uh, and kick off the discussion part. Uh, and I'll just hand over to Slava to, uh, for him to present his ideas around uh, a flexible scheme for space management. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> I think it will be good to have uh, something like, okay, let me, yes, something changed. Okay, so I hope we will have discussion and for example, maybe I will echoing some ideas or maybe it's something like guys knows that something was made before and doesn't work. So if you know something, share something. <laughs> So the point of this talk is something like share uh, the idea and something like have some feedback. And uh, so when I started to think about this idea, so my co-author simply shared with me this problem. So the problem was, okay, we have something like a rack with a bunch of storage devices. Can we do something for virtual machines? And uh, I simply would like to share uh, what uh, storage pool concept means, uh, what something like my vision, how this problem can, can be solved, and something like some open questions for this. So first of all, uh, Guy shared with me, okay, we have something like multiple storage devices. Maybe it's something like REC, uh, with a bunch of storage devices, and for example, it could be the NSSSD, SMRGD. Uh, even uh, maybe we could have something like dedicated core for every storage device. And for example, we have a bunch of virtual machines. So for example, how uh, virtual machines can uh, use this uh, storage space in efficient manner. So how can be uh, implemented in some way? Because for example, virtual machines can be on multiple nodes and uh, storage devices can be located in multiple nodes. So what can we do here? And for example, it will be good to have uh, something like aggregated LBA space when, for example, we can imagine or uh, represent uh, the all storage devices uh, like one big uh, aggregated uh, space and this space can be uh, distributed in some way between uh, virtual machines. And even if you consider something like one virtual machine, so it's something like, anyway, slightly uh, not easy problem because if you are talking about the NSSSD, SMRGD, we need to take into account uh, that, for example, uh, we need to write an append-only mode. And finally, it means that the whole problems of this will be on something like file system, on root of file system of virtual machine or something else, uh, but virtual machines need to be aware about that it's something like the SSSD. Uh, also, for example, uh, how to distribute this uh, space of different storage devices. Again, if we uh, don't provide some smart technique for this, it means that it's up to virtual machine or up to application how to uh, do this, but it will be good to have some, some really good smart technique uh, when, for example, virtual machine will be not aware about something uh, is happening under the hood. And for example, uh, virtual machine doesn't need to be uh, to manage this in somehow, and because it will be no change on virtual machine side, uh, no change in for systems that virtual machine I uh, can use. And it looks like that it sounds like uh, virtual machines needs not to be aware about each other, but finally use uh, the aggregated space in some way. And finally, I simply uh, when I started to think about uh, something like virtual machines needs not to be aware about another virtual machines, uh, I, uh, one idea crossed my mind, something like similarity between virtual memory. So we would like to ask question. Well, um, I would like more details on what you mean by a virtual machine being aware of another virtual machine. In these days of financial compute, how can that even be possible? No, I mean, for example, you can create one virtual machine, and for example, you need some uh, something like uh, some space for RootFS. And I mean that, for example, I mean from the uh, something like partition point of view, that, for example, you place or you allocate some space for this partition. 
for this virtual machine and for another virtual machine. You need something like to distribute the space but of that, device. That's not a problem for the virtual machine. That's the yeah, hypervisor and, and uh, the system administrator problem. It's not the virtual machine problem. No, I, I don't think about something like uh, some from high level uh, that virtual machine doesn't need to know each, about each other. I mean, for example, that we need to distribute the space of storage devices between uh, multiple virtual machines. I, 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 I get it. Okay. Uh, my point is you, you keep talking about the virtual machine being aware of other virtual machines. That's aware. not a problem for the virtual machine level. That's below that hypervisor level. No, again, I'm not talking about distribution time slices or something, so I simply... F I'm not either, okay, uh, so but the hypervisor is going to provide the storage to virtual machine and how that's set up, it's, it's up to the hypervisor and the system administrator, it's not a VM thing. The VM just use what you give them. They don't know how that's set up, they can't. So it's just uh, the way you describe the problem is confusing because that, that's maybe, something that, that is lower not it's not a vm level problem it's below that that's yeah. that's the only point i i, I, I yeah, wanted so to make my point is also pretty simple so for example if you are talking about storage device for example we can split storage device from part, multiple partitions so and finally we can use these partitions or something like this so it means that we uh, can assign uh, this partition for root fs of one uh, virtual machine or something and uh, okay maybe I'm missing something, or maybe I'm not uh, explaining in a clear way. But my point here is that, for example, uh, we could have aggregated space of this uh, storage pool, for example, and when uh, finally we would like to assign some LBA to some particular uh, partition or what virtual machine can see, uh, we can something like suggest some mechanism of smart distribution of uh, this aggregated space between these uh, like partitions or something. It doesn't matter who managing these partitions, but finally, anyway, we need to uh, allocate some uh, real physical space in some way for some uh, partitions or something. So this is my point. So for example, it could be hypervisor or something else. Uh, the point here is that, for example, how to, uh, how to implement this uh, distribution and also, for example, one of uh, another point of view is that uh, how to uh, easily uh, change or resize this partition, for example, or for example, do maybe some on-demand allocation, or maybe, for example, to provide some uh, different erasure coding scheme for different uh, partitions or for different virtual machines, uh, or maybe some replication scheme or something. Uh, this is the point, how to do this in a flexible way. So this is the point. And finally, I simply started to think about uh, let's uh, virtual machine sits on some uh, block device, maybe it's user space block device, for example, and every user space block device manages something like block table, looks like wise to page table. And finally, uh, block table simply provides for uh, Users block, uh, user space block device or some subsystems that, for example, we can see some number of sort of like uh, logical block addresses, but finally it could be located, maybe not. And uh, finally it looks like page table, but it could be something like block table. So question? Uh, yeah, how do you envision this to look like to the VM itself? Because um, while you could do all sorts of mapping in the hypervisor and we do all sorts of mapping in the hypervisor. At the end of the day, all of these things will be presented to the VM as a block device. Correct? Question one, a single or several? So if it's something like one block device, so it's one block device from one okay. block machine. Okay, so if you, but then the problem is if you have one block device, um, the block devices, or rather the things on the block device, tend to react very peculiar if you start resizing that thing. As, or if you start unmapping chunks from within that block device. In fact, they react very aggressively negatively on that. Try to do that with a file system on it and you're screwed. So um, while technically we could do all sorts of remapping, de facto, once it is a block device which is exposed to the VM, it's pretty much static. All the file systems assume they will be static. Some allow you to increase the size 
but shrinking the size is horrible, horrible, horrible. And so, yes, we could do a mapping, but I can't really see how we could make this dynamic, nor why we should make this dynamic. So I'm not for, I think not for why we can do this not in dynamic way. So, okay, go ahead. He's first. Okay, so um, this is not a response to what Hannes said, but when I look at the diagram, it reminds me of Ceph RBD. Uh, so I'm curious to see if there's, is this at a different level or uh, would it be comparable to something like what Ceph can do, a distributed storage system? So or LLVM or any other solution out there that does standardized pool management. There are a lot of, of stuff out there already that, that, that allows you to, to uh, get a bunch of storage devices and, and virtualize them into some logical block devices and the mapping is handled automatically by whatever layer, L LVM or Rados. Uh, there are other things uh, out there as well. So it kind of looks like this. Yeah, so maybe, how is uh, that, what you're talking about, how is that different from the solution that are already existing out there? So my point, my vision is that what is the difference? Because uh, in, in, in this scheme, for example, you can uh, assign uh, different, uh, for example, erasure coding scheme for different block devices. Can we do this for C, for example? Or it will be for global vision. Can we do or not? So um, I'm not sure what the specific details are with Ceph, but I do know it has a configurable algorithm. You can set the replication factor. So if you want to replicate three times to your storage pool or things like that, it is configurable, yeah. But it will be for the whole bunch of storage devices, I assume, not for, for example, not for particular virtual machine. So, so the, the Ceph model is that you, you have a cluster of storage nodes. Um, and all those storage nodes can, can play together in Ceph, then you can create volumes. They're virtual, and they will be mapped to these storage nodes. It's an object store, distributed object store. On top of the object store, you can create different interfaces, one of which is block devices. And then how the block device that you expose to whoever uses that block device, which can be a VM, uh, you, you'll get the mapping for the, the storage space of that block device through the object store. There is fine to face, there are other, or direct uh, also use of the, the object store itself. So, uh, again, there are solutions out there that does this. I cannot say, and, I and try to say that there is no solution. But the, the point would be so, what is it exactly you're trying to solve? Because if compared to the solution out there, what's the problem you're trying to, to address here? So that, that's kind of to, what we, is I'm not clear here. I'm trying to address some like flexible resize scheme, for example. Uh, I'm trying to address uh, on-demand allocation scheme, and for example, uh, easy migration scheme. Because from my point of view, if you have something like block table, we can easily change the mapping scheme. For example, we have what particular uh, something like what virtual machine C. Uh, something like L virtual LBA, so finally where is mapped. And for example, if you have block mapping, we can easily change this mapping because it can be done uh, under hood and uh, something like what virtual machine see, it will see the same virtual LBAs. And it's something like basis for uh, copy and write policies, and SSD, garbage collector, if you like to use this. So this is a point. So what I'm trying to solve, I'm trying to provide some way with, for example, uh, virtual machine will see the same set of virtual LBAs, but uh, on the block level, for example, if we would like to move some data from one real physical LBA to another one, so finally block table hide this from virtual machine. I mean, that, sorry, sorry. Um, that is what LBM does, right? I mean, you give him arbitrary tables, remapping incoming LBAs to something other outgoing LBAs. That's what LBM does. And you can even reconfigure it on the fly. So, difference being? I need to check. S 
So aren't different hyperscalers solving this problem in their own way already? I mean, you talk about migration, and you know that's kind of the latest you know thing that is coming, like things like NVMe, and then everybody has an opinion on how to do that. So I think that trying to find a general solution in Linux is going to be very painful for you if you don't have like somebody with a real use case on how you know because they have complete different requirements. Yeah, and you're mixing a lot of things. I mean, it's a talking migration, and then before it's about a block management, and then you slightly mention three in provisioning. So it's a it's a lot of things at once, I believe. Okay, see. So. Yeah, it's also yeah hard to provide a lot of flexibility and a lot of possibilities without having like some specific use cases or some per specific performance metric comparing to existing solutions to to show that this is value and other people should invest in this as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been thinking on and off as like a research idea how to do the distributed zone storage in an easy way because you have large chunks, you don't have a lot of overhead for 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 mapping tables and so on. If not mapping by LBA, but mapping by a whole zone that could be a gigabyte or something, and then we could do something like a simpler Ceph, but that's still a very large project. <laughs> that could be a cool research idea, but it would have to take a lot of like defining to make sure that we're not reinventing the wheel again. But sometimes... Yeah, I mean, the, you, you, it was, <laughs> this is the forum to pitch new ideas, right? It's just that when you do research, uh, most of the things just <laughs> you stay in, in the idea stage, right? I think uh, every time we're trying to invent uh, some bike, you can find some interesting ideas. Yep. Cool. Um, but thanks. Yeah.